This is episode number 141 of the Homeowner Show. Well, whether you're DIY or look at hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Homeowner Show. We are glad that you could join us for this episode of the Homeowner Show here in the Homeowner Show Studios Live. Coming at you on the Facebook Lives. How you doing, Kev? Man, I am doing really, really well. And I can tell uh, that you've got it going over on over there as well. Somewhere. Some loud going on. Oh, there's the bumpity bumps. Right, look at that. We're, we're hitting all the... <laughs> we got, we got, we got we all kinds of fun stuff We got stuff feedback happening. going on in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is all good. Our secret is out, man. That's the, right. The feed is delayed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. I am doing really, really well. It has been a busy week, and it's about to get busier and busier as the summer drones on here. So anyway, things are good. I'll tell you this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I grew up thinking that if you said... There, the rain should go away. Uh-huh. You might get lynched <laughs> because I grew up in West Texas. Yeah, in West Texas, rain is sacred. Okay, so we, like you don't uh, you yeah, don't tell it to ever go away. No, 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 no. In fact, we used to have prayer sessions at church just for the <laughs> just, rain, but, but no uh, dances. No, no dances. Okay, that's for sure. That's but, good. But here in Houston, I'm kind of ready for the rain to go away for now. Yeah, it's and, we've had enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, and uh, it comes in in droves <laughs> and all at once. And like I, I actually looked out the other day, and it was coming in at an at a massive angle, <laughs> like almost sideways. So anyway, dude, but, it was it was so bad. So like I spent like when it rains, it it's kind of nice for me because I end up having a couple days off. Like okay. I can't I can't do too much work when it's raining. Sure. But when it, that storm came through, it knocked down a portion of my fence because there was a fence post that had rotted and it broke off in the concrete. Oh, man. So I had to dig that out and, and then replace it. So I, I spent my entire what would have been my day off because of the blessed rain mm. digging up a fence post. <laughs> That sounds terrible. And then listening to irritated horses tell me, let me out of my stall. And I'm like, no, you're too stupid not to walk through the hole in the fence. Right. So not, not only that, I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, since you put up those gutters, I'm sure it's better. But I mean, that that place gets pretty muddy back it there. Gets, it's because the roof, is, or the roof is sloped so bad. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Eh. You're not going to change the roof line. I might just tear it down. Okay. I'll, I'll reach my limit. Okay. One day. Someday. So, but not today. I, well, I'm not helping you with it. Well, that's because that. the studio is attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I probably will be helping with it then. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Like we uh, we we watched the uh, the Ryobi, the Ryobi, however you want to pronounce it. It's Ryobi. Yeah. It, well, I, I I thought it would be a fun drinking game to see how many times they pronounced it correctly during the live feed, and it would not have been healthy. No, and they <laughs> never pronounced it wrong. No, <laughs> it was it was always Ryobi. Like they're like, listen, people, like we're changing the culture around here. You're yes. gonna pronounce this thing right. So anyway, yeah, so they're, they're going live on this. I think was halfway <laughs> to teach people that it's not Ryobi. Although I don't think people care, they don't I think care. It's still They're going to still call it Ryobi. Absolutely, they are. Yeah. So anyway, we watched we watched the live tool feed. We're we're probably going to do an episode on that. Um, Kevin and I weren't impressed, even though we're big fans of Ryobi. Yeah, um, the, it, it was just a uh, it was um it was heavy on the automotive side. Either one of you or I are big into the fixing automotive things. I mean, I have been in the past, but like that, none, none of them really impressed me. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll talk about it, man. Like yeah. it's, it, there was, there was some cool stuff. There was some, there was some lame ducks. Yeah. They didn't bring back the garage door, you know, spoiler alert, no garage door opener. I was actually, they mentioned garage at one point. I know. And I was like, Oh, please, please. And they just, they yeah. didn't do it. Didn't do it. They didn't do it. Didn't happen. No. So we'll, 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 We'll recap that at some point in time. Maybe yeah. we we might even do that with Eric G. Yeah, that would be, be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but we we had this post circulating around Facebook today about this guy selling a Dorito in a in a mason jar. <laughs> this is like one of the most like 
entrepreneurship things you could possibly do. I loved it. It was so <laughs> awesome. So basically, this guy says that he's selling a special Dorito chip yeah. in a mason jar, yeah. and it's 10 bucks. Yes. And so I went and did the math. And, and, and $5 to ship it. $5 to ship it. So 15, 15 bucks for this Dorito chip. Right. You know? And like, to be fair, it looks kind of neat in the mason jar. You know, like whatever. Like, and he did some good copy on it. Sure. Like, kudos to him. Yeah. But like, it was, you know, a dollar bag of Dorito chips, and then maybe fifteen bucks on the jars. Right. And so it cost him maybe twenty two bucks to put this whole thing together. He sold twenty six of them, man. Which means he turned twenty two bucks into two hundred and sixty dollars. That's insane. Which is awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those deals where it's like I'm, I'm questioning the the um, thought process of the purchasers, uh-huh. but <laughs> I think they were purchasing it just to be like, I was one of those. Let, you let's know? be honest. It's not the worst thing the American public has spent their money on. No. In the last 50 years. Yeah, we, we probably <laughs> could do a whole episode on the worst things that people have spent their money on. Well, I could, I could be on the list. Yeah. I, I've never purchased you. Well, not me, but things I've spent my money on. Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense. (laughs) I haven't sold myself in a while. (laughs) Well, you weren't worth it anyway. Let alone some red bearded man. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. So, no doubt. Anyway, we got a cool episode for you guys tonight. That's right. And you you booked this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't book most of them, actually. (laughs) That's that's your uh, We need like a bell we can ring or something. That's right. Hey, I've actually booked two in the last, like, couple of months i know let's let's keep this let's keep yeah. this train a rolling yeah, you like that i know <laughs> well yeah well uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring them on in we've got lauren and david here from garage kings and so we'll let you guys introduce yourself uh thanks for thanks for coming on well thanks for having us we really appreciate you uh, uh introducing us to your audience um yeah. so my name is david todd yeah and um uh, i'm the owner of the local garage kings franchise okay and, um, you know, Garage Kings is a national, actually international. It started in Canada. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's uh, locations all across, um, you know, North America. Okay. So it's a, you know, it's a company that has a lot of support, but okay. we are locally owned. Cool. Uh, Very so. awesome. And, and Lauren, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Lauren. Um, this is my dad. Uh, we were working together um, doing Garage Kings um, along with my husband. So it's very much okay. a family business Great. Uh, right now. And uh, we're excited to get started and to you know, help people have beautiful garages. Cool. Well, tell us a little bit about like how, how did this come about? Because this is a, a little bit of a new venture for you guys. So how did you get into the garage flooring business? Well, it it wasn't really a straight path. Okay, it rarely is. <laughs> I um I had a fantastic career in the oil field. Okay, and and um, that um, came to an end uh, last year, and I was looking for the next thing to do. You know, my next adventure. Um, Lauren at the time was working for an insulation contractor, and we thought about doing insulation, and you know, got to putting numbers on paper and. You know, I just kind of decided that um, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at franchises. Yeah. And I went through a couple of insulation franchises, and I I thought, well, let's um, look at a little bit more. Let's see what the market's doing. See if there's something out there that's hot, you know, a niche. Yeah. And I came across the, uh, you know, the floor coatings, the garage floor coatings business. And... um, it um the Houston market just seemed really wide open for it. Yeah. Um and I started looking at franchises in that space and when I found Garage Kings it was I mean almost immediately I knew this was the one. No brainer, right? It was a no brainer. Okay. And just the people are just fantastic. Uh, the company was going through a transition at the time and I really liked what the new owner uh was was doing with it. Um, and I just thought it was the right time. How long have it. they been around as a company? Do you know? About 25 years. 25 years? Yeah. yeah. And what, do you know what part of Canada they started in? New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Okay. Yeah. And what, what, was there a reason that they started the company or? It was initially, um, 
Most of the work that they did was the artistic side. Okay. Where they, they did the marble epoxy floors. Mm-hmm. You know, the real artful stuff. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of stuff going on with epoxy right now. I mean, yeah. It, it, this, I'll just tell you guys, like, those of you that are listening out there right now, like, the epoxy floor, and, and I realize that that's not 100% of what y'all do, but the epoxy floor uh, niche, um, you mentioned that word, it's a good word, that niche has just blown up well, recently. It, people, people are going, man, I can have a much different experience in my garage if I mm-hmm. have a coating on this concrete slab. Right. And so it's it's really like like you said, it, it is it is uh, one of those markets that is really kind of hot right now, I would say. So that, that's awesome. But there there's a reason why it's it's growing that way. And that is the technology. Mm. It's advanced very rapidly in the last 20 to 30 years. Talk to me a little bit about that, because I don't uh, I don't guess I understand what that means. Well, the the newest products that we're using are actually a polyaspartic resin. Uh, which is a polyurea or a polyurethane. Okay. And it has um, it has the adhesion to the concrete is just as strong as epoxy, if not stronger. Mm. But it's also a lot tougher, and it's a little bit more flexible, so it doesn't chip the way an epoxy might chip. Okay. okay. But they've also formulated it with some UV inhibitors, so it's it doesn't yellow like an epoxy would. Um, it's it's uh, resistant to chemicals. Um, basically, anything that's going to come out of your car mm-hmm. isn't isn't going to hurt it. Okay, you just wipe it up, mop so, it, and you're done. Like with previous epoxies, like you had a leak, an oil leak in your car, mm-hmm. would that stain the epoxy? Is that absolutely? It could. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's still good. Nobody yeah. wants nobody no. wants to put an expensive <laughs> floor on and. <laughs> well, and and it, you know there's there's other issues as well down here. We don't have any salt because we don't have ice. Right. Right. Yeah. All the time. Sure. <laughs> every, every once in a while, a blue moon, moon in a February. That's right. <laughs> Five hundred <laughs> years. Happens. Yeah, when the apocalypse happens. Yeah. But, but even then, they don't put salt on the road. No, they don't. Um, if anything, they put like uh, like a gravel dirt Mm -hmm. type of thing right yeah yeah so it's very different it is but up north you'll see a lot of salt and the polyaspartics are very resistant to the salt wow and hot tires actually can um can cause a delamination of an epoxy or or any sort of paint and you'll see that sometimes uh with a just a painted garage where somebody's just used um an off-the-shelf paint product Interesting. So, so what, what would the salt do to the, the previous formulations? Like, what, what 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 kind of damage would that do to the it, floor? It makes it brittle. Makes it brittle. Yeah, and then it'll just come up. Oh, okay, so it kind of breaks it up. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's no good either. Yeah, I had a uh, the the previous home that I owned. Uh, at some point, I, I guess the homeowner just bought one of the off the shelf. Mm-hmm garage floor coatings and it's kind of speckled right Mm -hmm. um but it it was nice in that it was a whole lot easier to clean it was a whole lot easier to kind of you know to blow off or, or to sweep off or whatever but man i'm telling you like we had massive places where where it just completely come up i mean it because it whether or not it was i always kind of assumed it was a poor application in that um they probably didn't prepare the concrete well before they put it on there, and I don't really know what that process is. What what kind of process is it to apply a garage floor coating? Well, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> the short answer is yes. extensive. <laughs> it, it is ninety five percent of the success of the project. Okay, is the preparation. Okay, and we actually use a diamond grinding process, and I brought uh, some tooling here. Okay, to show you what that looks like. So this is a tool for okay. a diamond grinder. Cool. It's actually a uh, the cutting surface or the abrasive surface is um, impregnated with diamonds. There you go. Right there. These are industrial diamonds. Oh, it's diamonds. Mm-hmm. Yep. Interesting. So Put that on your finger, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's not that expensive. You've already said yes to someone <laughs> yeah. else. You can't. <laughs> if you want it, put a ring on it, right? <laughs> okay. Let me see that thing. Yeah. And what this will do is... Um, it's heavy. 
Yeah. It'll take that top surface of the concrete off, what, what you call the, the cream. Mm-hmm. It'll get it down to the aggregate and um, leave a profile on the concrete. It'll leave it rough. Okay. So we're looking for a CSP of about three or four, somewhere between three and five. Okay. So you want that surface to be rough. And what that does is that gives the um, the resin more area to bond to. Yeah. Some but, crevices, right? Exactly. Okay. But also it exposes the surface of the concrete to, um, you know, the porosity of the concrete. Concrete is not... Um, you know, completely impermeable. Yeah, it's it's and it's so, porous too, it right? It is porous. So correct. So that's that's both good and bad in some ways, I would assume. It is. In in the case of a garage, though, what you're going to do with this uh, coating is you're going to allow that product to actually flow into the concrete itself. Okay. Okay. So it has surface area to bond to, but it also penetrates into the pores of the of the concrete. And once you have that bond, that bond with the concrete is stronger than the concrete itself. Really? You break the concrete before you break that bond. Huh. Oh, wow. So you bust up the concrete, it's just going to come up with it. I mean, like, it's probably in, like, large, massive yeah. chunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so but this, you this can this remove it. You use oh. this tool. Oh, that's what I was going <laughs> to Yeah, that was, that was gonna, what I was okay. going to ask, too. <laughs> yeah, so, so okay. tell Okay, show show that tool there in the, okay. in the camera. What is that tool? They call this a PCD. Okay. Which coming from the oil field is really hard a for me to cool say. Pretty cool device. <laughs> <laughs> it, stands, <laughs> it stands for polycrystalline diamond. Although in the oil field uh, we had bits with these types of cutters, and they were called polycrystalline diamond cutters. Huh. So we called them PDC in the oil field. They're called PCD in this industry. Okay. So I had to kind of shift gears and. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's hard to remember that. It, it is. is. <laughs> so so what is this? But, what does this device actually do differently than? I mean, how does that break it up? It the way the cutter works is instead of grinding the surface, it actually shears at the surface. Okay. So this will actually remove a coating from the concrete. Okay. But once the coating is removed, you still have to make sure you get down to the to the bare concrete and then profile that surface. Okay. So you would start with this and remove the coating, and then you would go to this and create the profile. Okay. Okay. So you'd have to go back with the diamond cutter yes. to, uh, mm-hmm. and then do you just reapply another coat of your product? Or you, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know why anybody would go back with a, another layer of concrete. That seems dumb. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> you, you could. I mean, I, mean, but I don't know why a, you would. I mean, and and honestly, it sounds like you're probably not. I mean, maybe leveler. Do you use? Yeah. Do you use this? Do you use that product to um, get rid of an epoxy and then put your product down? Correct. For example? Right. Okay. You you take a coating off. Yeah. And then replace it. So okay. are you are you usually using that tool to remove an inferior product so that you guys can put y'all's down? Um, or I, I, I would say not all of them. Okay. There's a few. Yeah. There's a few. Yeah. But most of them are, are just plain concrete. Uh-huh. And... They may or may not have some kind of sealer put on them at one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, they're typically impregnated with oil and other fluids that leak out of cars. So So you guys guys are using that tool to kind of remove that layer of stuff as well? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm I'm actually curious, what do those attach to? Yeah. Oh, I didn't bring that. (laughs) I I imagine it's a little heavy. (laughs) About 900 pounds. (laughs) Well, come on. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You're a big dude. I feel like I feel like you could carry whatever you want to carry. You, you it, could squat that. That's right. yeah, it does have wheels on it. That's good. That's good. But it's uh, it's an industrial uh, floor grinder. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So is it is it like multiple ones of those yes. working in tandem? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so like, how many of those going at one time? Um, for my configuration, the grinder that I have. I would have six of these. Okay. And they're on two separate um, wheels, if you will, yeah. that turn in opposite directions. Okay. Now, there are some uh, planetary grinders that are larger uh, where you could run up to 18. Okay. Or six on each wheel, and they've got three wheels. So 
Um, this grinder is actually a little bit smaller than some of the bigger ones. The tooling is all the same, though. Sure. Right. Just how right. many you put on the... Correct. So, okay, let me ask you this question. If you were to do just a standard two-car garage, which I, I know that that is a loaded thing, <laughs> because two-car <laughs> garage can be much different depending on what house you're mm-hmm. looking at. But like a, a builder-grade two-car garage, which is small, y'all, those are 400 small 400 to 450 square feet. Yeah, 400, 450 square feet. Okay. Uh, how long would it take you to grind that down to where it's time that it's prepped to – how long does it take that that machine to do that work? Depends on how good your installers are. Oh. <laughs> but uh, when we went through training, we did a, a job start to finish from 8.30 to 4 o'clock in okay. one day. Great. I mean that. That's start that, to finish. Start to finish. Oh, that's that's applying the epoxy. The, Absolutely. The, the, that's, is, are we calling it epoxy or polyurethane or? It's well, it's a polyaspartic. 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 So we're, we're we're getting a vocabulary lesson, Kevin. Yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> I can barely say it. Do you have your Do you have your notebook? <laughs> uh, well, I don't. Okay. But I wish I did. But <laughs> polyaspartic. The the polyaspartic gives you the advantage of the faster cure time, so you okay. can do oh. it in one day. Okay. Whereas an epoxy, you would you would have to put the base coat of epoxy down and then come back the next day and finish it. Oh man! Now when you're um, saying like done in one day, like you can drive on it, you need about three days of cure time before okay. you drive on it. Okay. But like application, grind, all that kind of stuff, you're you're out of there in one day. Yep. Well, that that's huge because that means that like for me as a homeowner. Um, I really only got to take one day off work if I want to be there while you're doing it. I'm only going to take one day. And I don't got to like for me. I live in a gated neighborhood, so I only got to get you through the gate one time. One like day. All, it's a lot. I mean, that's really great that yeah. you can do it in one day. That's fantastic. Absolutely. So what? What is the responsibility of the garage owner then? I mean, like, are, do we have to remove everything from the garage? Is that something you yes. guys do? Is that a fee? How, how does that work? The homeowner typically does that. Okay. If, I, I imagine that's better for your liability. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to be grop, dropping grandma's china. Right. Right. Yeah. We can provide you a storage solution, though. Okay. So we can bring over a trailer and park it in your uh, driveway, and then you just bring all your stuff into it, you know, lock it up. And then, you know, it's not like, well, where do I put all my stuff? Is it going to go in my house? Yeah. Or is it going to go, you know. I don't want to sit in the driveway. Exactly. I have terrible neighbors. They'll, <laughs> they'll loot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you so you bring that over maybe the day before. Or a couple of days yeah, before, day however long before. it takes a uh, thing, you know, they think that it'll take to, to remove everything. They remove everything. So how often do you arrive on site and there's still stuff in the garage? How often does that happen? <laughs> I want to know. Oh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> we're, not, we're not asking for names. <laughs> right, I, don't want, I don't want the specific people. I just want to know, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, how often do you arrive on scene and you're like, you still got to get that out? Come on, guy. Well, <laughs> hey, we have great customers. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's a, an 8. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Because, I mean, I, mean, I get it. Like, like there's and, and there's always like that that freezer or something like can you help me with this you yeah. know like something right? sorry I couldn't move it yeah exactly <laughs> it's one of those deals yeah yeah well, it's just one more thing you have to do before you start mm-hmm. you want us gone in one day right right yeah, okay there you, go. <laughs> there you go yeah so um I I think that as as we kind of think through this one of the questions I've got is uh, Craig mentioned the responsibility of the homeowner I'm curious. What is the responsibility of the homeowner once this is applied and it's cured and it's good to go? Like, is there maintenance on this this garage flooring? Dawn soap and a squeegee. That's about it. That's about it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so how often do I have to dawn soap and squeegee this thing? Well, how clean do you like your floors? Mm, I mean, I only eat them <laughs> off of my garage floor once or twice a year. I'm lying. I never eat off my garage floor. So, uh, the, the but clean it I once or think, twice a year. Yeah, <laughs> twice a year. Okay. I mean, because I think that um, it's one of those deals where if I'm putting this type of flooring down, there, there's probably a couple of reasons. One, I want to keep my garage clean. Mm-hmm. Right. I also might use this as a workshop. 
in some way. And so I want to be able to clean it easily. So um, I guess added to that question is if I'm not Don Soap and squeegeeing this thing, how how much easier is it to just sweep or blow you know blow out with a with a small blower or something like that? What is that in comparison to like a, a concrete flooring? Well, it's absolutely seamless. Okay. So there's no ridges or cracks or anything that are going to catch dirt. Oh, um, so it's like like I guess the the closest you would get to in a home would be like a. I don't know, like a laminate flooring that doesn't have ridges in it. I mean, something that's just really, really sealed well, I guess, right? Like a sheet it's, laminate that's yeah, perfectly like, smooth, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, nothing's going to really adhere to it either, so it, it just... No. Wow. Well, so so here's here's my question to that, and I'm, I'm like... Please don't take me as being aggressive. I'm trying to I'm trying to poke some holes in this thing. <laughs> if I get it wet, is it going to be slick? It's going to be a little bit slicker. Okay. Yeah. But you know we do treat it with a um, we put a grit in the top coat. Okay. That's going to give it some friction. And if you want to look at this, um, hey, you guys uh, brought a sample. Here. Yeah. Okay. One thing you'll notice is that the with the flake. See that here. It kind of gives it a little bit of character. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling yeah. it. Yeah. I'm putting this in front of the, and it's got like a, right. it kind of has like a bit of like a sand kind of a. Well, plus just the, just the way the flake lays down, it's, it's kind of like, um, yeah, you can, surface has character. Yeah, you can, no, yeah, you can mm-hmm. see it in the, can. in the lighting as you, as you kind of moved it around a little bit, you could see a little bit of the, um, texture. Yeah. The mm-hmm. texture. Yeah, you can see some of that as you're, and even whenever you're holding it up like that, I think you can see some, uh, some texture in there yeah but it's still not going to hold dirt well that's the thing like no texture that doesn't hold dirt though is fantastic right and, feel, and, feel honest, like and honestly you want some uh oh yeah honestly i mean i think you probably want some some traction on this a little bit because I mean, like you said if it gets wet or even your vehicle i mean if, if you you know you come in and i, I know some people they like Mario Andretti, their vehicle <laughs> into the uh, garage. They get what they deserve. That's right. But like, if you were to like, like come in at five or ten miles an hour or something, if you slam on your brakes, you might just slide. But this has got enough texture on it that that's not going to happen. Well, so and I was I was actually looking at y'all's website before you came over. Um, yes, Kevin and I do research. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it looked like there was some different layers of warranty. On, on different kinds of flooring. And so, like, that had a certain kind of warranty, and then there's, like, m- I think, like, a marble texture that has a different kind of a warranty. Is it, like, 5, 10, 15? Is that... It's a it's seven-year warranty for an epoxy okay. and a 21-year warranty for a total polyaspartic. Holy okay. cow. Yeah. Yes. And that's then like three... I, I'm, I'm not math whiz or anything, but that's three <laughs> times the warranty. <laughs> Good, that's amazing. Good job, Kev. Thanks. <laughs> I, I'm, I, like, I don't know much. West Texas Public Schools. That's Thank right. you. That's right. Um, what about the marbling? Is that is that just a different coloration or is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's lots of different options as to how. It doesn't have to be the flake. What all different options do we have there? Uh, what we brought today is, is just flake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What what I'm saying though is like there's there, there's other like kinds of colors and mm-hmm. and and like because oh you mean other color chips? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like the epoxy that you're looking at, the ones that have kind of that wavy sort of yeah stuff. yeah yeah. So you can you can basically do any kind of color in that. Okay. Um, that is actually you know we're talking about a a niche within a niche. Okay. Um, those sorts of um patterns and mm-hmm. stuff like that is one of a kind. Every time you put it in a floor with that marbled epoxy, it is unique. Right. It won't be re- recreated. And so there are um, there are people within the industry and that's what they specialize in. Okay. And they're very, very good at it. Okay. And, and so there's the flake, there's the marbling, there, there, and there's even like solid colors, right? That yes. just, Like without flake. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And are those, are those different applications or are they just different same product. variation just, okay same product right. just different just less right. one step okay and and so then like the seven year warranty the 21 year warranty is just a different application right so the 21 well yes but no but the chemical okay. that we put down so if you get just an epoxy then it's a shorter 
um, warranty. If you right. get the polyaspartic, um, then you get the, the longer warranty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask this question then. Do you also do epoxy flooring? Yes. Okay. So that's something you will do. The, 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 the polyaspartic is just an upgrade. It's a better and, product. Yeah. It's yeah. a better product. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're getting what you pay for. I'm, I'm sure mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's more expensive, but at, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for, for sure. Now, yeah. the, the epoxies, there are some applications where epoxy might be preferable. Okay. Okay. And like the, what? One of them is if you have a water problem. Mm. Oh. You know, if you've got uh, groundwater under your slab or your water content of the slab is high, then um, polyaspartics don't work quite as well. Is, well, there, so is there a reason? or th- They're a little bit more sensitive okay. to, uh, to the water. Um, and... You know, part of the reason why they're such good products, though, is they're very highly engineered, mm-hmm. and it does create some difficulties, if you will. Um, it's not for the average person. You've you've got a very short pot life, yeah, and your working time is short. Hmm. So when you get ready to mix this stuff up and put it down, you know, you got to get it done, right? And if you don't know what you're doing, you can't play around with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me, let me see once that. Once it sets uh, up on you. That brochure there, Kev. Yeah. Sorry. That's good. So one of the things that we do is before uh, we put down a coating, we're going to use this instrument right here, mm-hmm. which is a moisture meter. Okay. And it has these probes on the back of it. And what you do is you set it on the concrete, and you just push it down, and it'll measure the moisture content of the concrete. Oh. And it'll tell you, well, basically, it needs to be below 4.2%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if your moisture content is higher than that, which would be the case if you did have a groundwater problem, uh, then we have a specifically formulated epoxy product that is better for uh, acting as a barrier against the water. Okay. Well, well, so at that point, you'd be able to tell me, you need the the polyaspartic or you need the epoxy. Like we recommend, this is the best product for you at that point. I mean, you're you're not going to try to put something on my. I mean, you, no, I want it to last. Hold. Yeah, you want it to last no matter what, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can get both. You can get an epoxy base coat and then a polyaspartic top coat. Oh, okay. Interesting. So so there's a. So if you have a water issue. You could do epoxy with the polyaspartic on top, and you get the best of both worlds at that point. Right. Correct. Wow. That'd be a specific application, though. Yeah, because okay, well, you're dealing with a specific situation. Right. With people. Okay, got it. Right. What, what would that specific? I mean, what would make me want to do both? What would I? What would I be doing in my garage that would make me want to do both? Slip and slides. Uh, <laughs> and you might. If uh, if your garage floor is always wet. Mm-hmm. You might have a moisture problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually coming up through the slab. Right. In which case you'll want a base layer or the of um, the coating that's directly on the concrete. Mm-hmm. You'll want a layer that acts as a moisture barrier or, or the, the best product for that moisture barrier. Right. Is what you want on that layer. So you're, you're, you're talking about like if there's a moisture issue underneath the slab, not necessarily yes. if I'm like an aquarium repair man. No. <laughs> okay. If the water comes from the top. <laughs> you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Just as long as it slopes toward the big door. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, like we live in Houston, Texas. And in Houston, Texas, I've, I've never been around an area that has more slab issues more foundation problems. I have. Than, I was going to say, go to College Station, man. I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> I've just never been there personally. That's just. I, you I, live I, in a river valley. That's what you. <laughs> but but at the end of the day, there's a ton of places around here that have foundation issues, yeah. and yeah. so I mean, it's a very good possibility in this area that you've got a high moisture content in your slab, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, our, our house has had foundation issues, and we, when we were looking at homes in the area, we found that there was a number of homes that had already had foundation work done on them, you know, just yeah. part of it. And, you, you know, you really can't fix that by putting a coating on it. Right. That's yeah. Putting lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. <laughs> right. Still a pig. So it, it, it's it was, a pretty one. Yeah. <laughs> so in that moment, do you make sure that you just say, look. The epoxy is going to be the best option for you. 
And if you really want that polyaspartic, we'll put that on top. We'll put the polyaspartic on top of the epoxy. Okay. Yes. So how do you apply that? Like, do you still have to rough that up in order to to put the put, put your product on there? Well, if you do it soon enough, when before the uh, base layer is completely cured, uh-huh. then you'll get a good chemical bond. Oh, okay. So you so do it right you, away. Can you walk on that then before it's fully fully cured? You just can't drive on it, for example? You, you give it about 24 hours and you can walk on it. Okay. But but it, we're still talking like three days before it's fully, fully cured. cured. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. it'll probably take two weeks to fully cure. Okay. But to be strong enough to drive on, you want to wait three days. Okay. But so, and so, so let me ask you this, because I actually know people that have done this. Why wouldn't I want to go get a DIY kit of epoxy from, like, a big box store? Well, it'll be, it'll look great when you finish. Right. But it may only last six months. Okay. Or a year, a year and a half. And why, why is that? Is that because they're not, they're not using these tools or? The, the products just aren't the same quality level. Okay. And the, the products that we use are, are just top of the line, and you can't just go buy that off the shelf. Right. And the process that we use is also commercial. So the grinder that we have is not, you know, let me get this angle grinder and do 400 square feet on my hands and knees. Right. You know? um, so a lot of people will skip that prep part, or they'll they'll cut corners in that prep part, and they might do an acid etch instead of grinding. And what's and, that? So an acid etch is, is just another way to try to um, profile the concrete. So like they're throwing acid on the floor? Is Throw it? acid on yeah. it, yeah. Okay. Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and when you do it that way, it, I mean, it can be done, but it's just not as effective as uh-huh. just going ahead and grinding the layer off. Now, is, I, I've, never, I've never done one of these before. I've never bought a kit from the store. Is in the instructions, I imagine you guys have looked in the instructions on these. Do they say like, hey, you guys need to grind the floor or you need to acid etch or you need to do something like that in order to prep? In, in a do-it-yourself kit, uh-huh. it's probably going to recommend that you acid etch. Okay. Rather than grind. Okay. Yeah. But you, but you're like you're saying like, look, I mean like acid etch, I mean like like what Lauren's saying, like sometimes that'll do the trick, mm-hmm. but the way you get it done is by grinding the floor and the easiest way yeah. to do that is with these industrial grinders and you guys can't afford this 900 pound piece of equipment. So yeah. hire us to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and, and when you get finished <laughs> acid etching, you've got acid on your floor. Right. Oh man. <laughs> you you got to be super careful about that. And, and, and I would assume on some level, Craig, it's like someone going and buying ortho off of the, uh, uh-huh. off of the shelf right. and going, look, I can DIY my, my, you know, pest control because ortho puts out a product that I can just, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. put down. Right. And, and, and you can tell me like, I mean, we've had this conversation is like, well, first of all, that chemical is not very strong because they've got to be able to put it on the shelf. Right. Like they can't, right. they can't put the stuff that I put on your house on the shelf because I'm licensed in, in order to handle that chemical. And so, there's a certain level of DIY to some of those things. That they're like, look, I can't put that same chemical in the hands of just the average person because they're not – they're too dumb to put it on, Like, right? <laughs> At the end of the well, day, I mean, they're just not licensed. They're not trained. They're not professionals. But like this you, is, you know, a lot of times it's not, it's not an issue of intelligence, and I imagine you guys run into this too. It's an issue of patience. Mm. You know, there's some skill too. Yeah. I mean like, and it takes patience in order to develop mm-hmm. some skill. And like a lot of times people are just, I just want my problem solved. Right. Like well, rather than develop the skill, they're just going to go, you know, what's the cheapest way I can get this done? Sure. You know, and, and then, you know, mm-hmm. like, like we've talked about, gosh, a hundred times on this show, it's like, well, when you cheap out, you end up paying for it in the long run. That's Absolutely. right. So. And that's why we asked one of the questions that we ask at the end of our of our show in the final four. It's like it's a job you walked away from. At the end of the day, like you and I are probably we're, we're just it's not possible for us to be professional in every single area of our life. It's just not possible, right? We, we can yeah. be professional in one, maybe two areas of our life. But other than that, there's other people that are professionals. And that's one of the reasons we do this show is to put professionals in front of people so they know what to look for, so they know what to, questions to ask, right? So that they're not finding themselves in a position where they're looking back going, man, I wish I would have known. Because – Knowledge is half of the half of the problem. Like what I know at this point from talking to you guys is that 
I'm not qualified to put down a flooring that is that is a high quality product. I'm just not qualified to do that. You're qualified to do that. You've bought into the uh, the franchise. You've gone through the training. You've got the products on hand. You've got the tools in your possession to do this. And unless you have all those things, um, not only that, like Craig and I have this DIY calculator on our on our website. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out because one of the questions on there is how bad do you want to do this job? And and time is a factor too, right? So you're mm-hmm. talking about doing this in a day. This might take me three weeks to do. And I can I live with all of my stuff out of my garage for three weeks? In the driveway. Right, in the driveway. With my looter neighbors. Exactly. <laughs> well, then there's yeah. some other things that, that you might not know. Like, for example, um, some of these chemicals, when you mix them, you have to pour them mm. quickly mm. or else they will... You know, ruin inside. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be done in, in 30 seconds. And if you didn't know that, you spent, you know, however much money on this DIY kit, and then it's all inside your bucket. You know, you have like, a brick. You yeah. have a puck. Right. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> for, for giant hockey players. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you might, and this, and this happened to one of our friends too, you might say, oh, well, I should have bought three, but I only bought two, and now I've uh, got like 100 square feet. And you go to the store and you buy one that's the exact same color, except it's not the exact same color. Right? Uh. And so you can, you know, it's like, well, I could have left it and it would have just been a patch of concrete, but now it's like a bluer blue than this blue, um. you know? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's just one of those things where I think so many, so many times we think I can do this cheaper. And honestly, I get it. Because I, I'll tell you right now, I'm a cheap type of person. You can. Yeah, I mean, you can do it cheaper. And, I, and I'm the type of person that's like, look, I can I can get my hands dirty. I can figure this out. I'm a smart dude. Like, I, I'm resourced. I, I've seen YouTube before. And I can figure out how to search really, <laughs> really well, right? But at the end of the day, I look back at it and go, like, I'm not the professional. Like, I'm just not as good as at this as somebody else is. And so it's, it really is a question of what are you, what are you paying for? What are you getting? And at what point are you going to have to turn around and pay someone else to fix it? Fix it. Yeah. You know, and that happens. And it, oh, so, it happens all the time. So the answer is you're paying for the result. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what you want. Yeah. You and and, want and one of the things we talk about a lot around here too, is um, the value of your home and, mm-hmm. and trying to get something out of what you put in it. And, and, and let's be honest. I mean, a garage floor coating is probably not one of those things that people are going to go, oh, you spent that on it? I'll pay that much for it. Um, it, It's one of those things that people are like, oh, that's really nice. I'm glad this house has Has that, right? Mm -hmm. It's different in that case. But like when we bought our house that had a a, a coating on on the floor, it was nice, but it was chipped. And after a while, it just looks terrible. Bad, yeah. And I can then, fix that for you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but then, but I then know a guy. I either got to, I either have to fix it, or I have to be okay selling it to someone. Mm-hmm. Going, look, this is less than ideal, you know. Right. And it's just one of those things you got to deal with. Yeah. And yeah. and kind of going back to our warranty, that 21-year warranty is transferable. Whoa. So if you were to sell it, the next homeowner maintains the warranty. That's that's yeah. really huge. It, that's unusual. I mean, I, I had a uh, – I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. I had a water softener that was put in six months before we bought the house, and something happened with a sprinkler, and it, it was turned the wrong direction. It was watering the water softener, and it mm. burnt the – brain out of the uh the water softener had to be replaced and uh they wouldn't warranty it and i was like this thing's only six months old and they're like yeah wow. it, we would, we, they said we would warranty it if it was the original homeowner but it wasn't it was six months and i was like yeah that's a shame it's, it's a shame it's like you don't trust your product enough to to be able to warranty it to the next person after six months, whenever it's a, it was a like a three year warranty or something like that. But you're talking twenty one year. Yeah. It's transferable. That's that that speaks volumes in my mind to the product itself. Oh, I believe in this product. Yeah. So so, so I'll what, fix it. And like I'm not I'm not anticipating this happening. But what happens if somebody has a warranty claim? We, we fix, fix it. it. I mean, do you, do you just repair it? Do you take up the whole floor and replace it? How how does that work? Sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes that's what you, yeah, okay. Yeah. I know that's not any fun. Um, 
because I've had to do warranty work myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, like some, sometimes like what you're saying, like sometimes like you can't match that color. Sometimes you can't, you know, or, or for right. whatever reason, like that's just not going to work. Okay. So here's, here's a question because I, I think that this is something our, our listeners will want to know. How often is a warranty claim put in on the polyaspartic specifically? How often do you specific? I mean, I know this is a fairly new thing for you, but I mean, yeah. I, it's one of those deals where it's like, I I, I can't assume, imagine that often with a 21 year warranty. I wouldn't think so. It's, I won't say that it doesn't happen. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but budgeting for warranty is, um, is, is small. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's not it, a big part of the budget. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of those things where I look at it and go, you get what you pay for. Exactly. I mean, because 21 years, you're saying 21 year warranty. That means this thing is going to last a lot longer than 21 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you'll get tired of the color first. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you probably would have been long past. You've sold that house. Mm-hmm. That house has been sold four or five times before that right. flooring is going to go bad. But the, the other thing it tells you is that I'm going to do it right. Yeah. Because I don't I don't want to come back and fix it. Right. In in, in five years or ten years or yeah you don't just don't. I don't. No. I want to come and uh, and sit there and uh, you know drink beer and. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you want to <laughs> talk about the floor? That's yeah, right. That's exactly right. <laughs> it still looks good. Yeah. Aren't you proud of this thing? Absolutely. That's one of those things like, hey, dude, come check out my floor. Yeah. And actually, you got to see this. And actually, <laughs> that's a growing trend because, you know, everybody was home for a really long time recently. And a lot of a lot of people are moving towards creating that additional living space uh-huh. um, and converting the garage and, and, and lots of man caves. You know, not just for, you know, shops as normal or you would expect, but just, you know, I want to go and hang out in here. Right. Like for our neighbor has like a whole bar set up in theirs. Nice. I, was gonna say, I, I see that more and more now, like when you drive down the street, you'll see the garage door open and that's become kind of like the, the neighborhood hangout spot. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 taking the spot of swinging on your front porch. Yeah. You're chilling in your garage instead. Yeah, I was actually, we've got a neighbor, a uh, friend, uh, Craig and I have a mutual friend who, who live in the neighborhood. And when you drive to their house, there's like four or five garages and it's not a long way into their neighborhood. It's a pretty short distance into their neighborhood. Four or five garages, there's like seven people hanging out in the garage with a, <laughs> you know, like an 80 inch TV in there and a ping pong table. And it's like, they're watching football, playing ping pong and drinking beer, yeah. you know, that's yeah. what they do in <laughs> there. And everybody likes to hang out in a nice place. Yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah. Kind of have a nice garage. Right. Makes uh, them feel good. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. So, so let's, let, let's, let's do the ugly talk, which is, I mean, and like part of this is I want to, I want to selfishly do this because y'all walked through my garage in order to get in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> <We did? laughs> what, what, what am I, what am I looking at paying to, to get one of these things installed? A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. But what the question you got to ask is what are you going to get? Sure. And, and, you know, we just talked about that. What you're going to get is something that's going to last. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's you don't have to worry about it ever. Yeah, you won't have to do it again, and and that's the value that it adds. But as far as price goes, um, is it like by the square foot or? I'd say if you were to budget somewhere around eight or nine dollars a square foot, okay, you'd be close. Okay, yeah, and and I mean, is that is that the uh, is that the epoxy or is that that's a polyspartic polyspartic? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those deals where you, you, you're really asking yourself, what am I going to, how am I going to maintain this? Because let's be honest, uh, concrete has its own problems. In my my garage right now, if you were to walk into my garage, you'd go, okay, there's already chips in this concrete. I mean, and and there's there's places where. Um, when I'm blowing out my garage, part of the concrete's coming with it. We so, fix all of that. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. it's one of those deals where you're you're either at some point going to have to come back with some sort of top coat, or you're going to have to reconcrete this on some level because eventually you're going to have a big problem that you're going to have to take care of. So it's really how are you going to fix it? Are you going to fix it right the first time? Or you can just live with it for a while until you get to a point where you got a problem and you're going to have to fix a bigger problem 
and then go, I wish I would have taken care of this earlier, yeah. you know? So. And you're talking about cracks and, and chips and stuff, and that's actually something that comes with our product. Whenever whenever you purchase one of our floors, we will repair all of your cracks and all of the chips Okay. before we put it on there. Okay, let me let me throw you a curveball because a crazy man owned my house before me. <laughs> so this, this actually comes up quite a bit, and I don't think we've ever talked about this on the show. So the the guy that owned this place before me apparently he was doing body work on cars and he concreted chains into the floor of the garage. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that something you guys could manage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just cut those things off and cut them off. Yeah. Grind them out. Yeah. Yeah. It's Patch the them. craziest looking thing you've ever seen in your life. What, mm. what I'm surprised about right now is they're going, yeah, we do that. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> no big deal. Like, dude, you're throwing up a curveball, and they're, like, standing in the batter's mm. box. They swung, <laughs> and they hit a home run off of that. Well, off of that what I'm wondering is what was rebar. It? Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And a, and a bad, um, you know, bad slab job, you'll see that periodically. The rebar will pop. Uh-huh. Gets too close to the surface, and, and you have a failure at that point. So where, where I'm thinking, like – where my brain goes with y'all's product because I run into like I, I ran into a situation not too long ago where uh, a family had termites in their home mm-hmm. and there but it was on an island in their kitchen mm-hmm. and it was like how did they get here well it it happened that they'd had a like and again I I think this is just the dumbest idea on the face of the planet but they had a a second story uh, water heater that had burst and just had wrenched everything from the second floor down Mm -hmm. and so they had to pull up all the carpet well when they pulled up the carpet there was a massive crack in the slab that ran from underneath the island all the way to the exterior of the the house and i was like well this is where the termites came up Mm -hmm. and so i'm listening to what y'all's product does and i'm like well shoot if like i just epoxied or you know whatever if i did the whole kitchen in this we'd probably seal up that crack and we never have to worry about this problem again. Yeah. Depends on the crack. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, was, it was a hairline crack, but that's all they need. Right. And, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, if, if we could seal that up somehow. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That, and you can see, we could seal it for you and you can put whatever you want on top of it. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But that's what we would do. Chase that crack with a grinder. Yeah. And then uh, fill it with a an epoxy based uh, repair product and then grind it smooth. My, my, brain never know is, it was there. my brains are working. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, because at this point, I'm, I mine is too. So I'm thinking a lot of people go with, like, a stained concrete, something mm-hmm. like that, inside their home. But that's going to have the same problems as any concrete eventually. And how many times have you walked into a stained concrete home and you go, well, there's a massive crack through that thing because... Something happened, and there's now there's this big crack. Sounds to me like you guys could come into that home instead of doing stained concrete and doing something, some fancy marbling look, make it look fantastic. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) man. (laughs) Why not? Can look like straight marble. I've seen the pictures. It it really does look cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and like they said, it's not going to be something that you see anywhere else. It's going to be unique. Oh, you can't. You can't. You, know, you can't it. reproduce it. Yeah. You you just don't know how it's going to turn out. Right. <laughs> well, it, let's let's say for instance that that like what Kevin's talking about, the house does have foundation issues, or like mm-hmm. a garage has foundation issues, and there's a crack that shows up in in the foundation. Is is what you guys putting down flexible? Yes. So it's not going to break mm-hmm. apart. If that slab, you know, obviously if it like, if it's on the side of a hill and it well, falls it off, moves. like he's probably <laughs> going to go with it. Yeah. But like, you know, to like, you know, like most of the time what we see is like a hairline crack in, mm-hmm. the, in the, in the slab. Like it's not going to break that. Like it's, right. it's going to flex. I'd imagine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the polyaspartics are more flexible than the epoxies. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why they're so durable. And, wow. and, and so does does the warranty that you guys put on the product cover slab damage? Don't know. It depends on the slab. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if the slab moves. If you're Tony Stark and it falls in the ocean, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, he had some pretty serious damage right there at the end. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, oh, dang it, I had the warranty yeah. on that floor. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, just, the, the coating is not going to stop your slab from breaking apart from each other. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And, it, and let's be honest, you've got a different warranty claim at that point. Oh, like, yeah. You've got a different... You got a it's different not the coating. Right, you got a different... Yeah. Issue Craig, be reasonable. It was international terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, intergalactic. <laughs> Intergalactic. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, let me ask you this question because we've 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 covered a range of, of things here. What have we not kind of covered that you think would be interesting for the for the average homeowner to know? Is there anything that we haven't covered already? Well, I, you know, if you if you see my trailer, it'll tell you. Well, this floor makes you go wow. Mm-hmm. And I have to say that. I still go, wow. Wow. Every time you see it. <laughs> Every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's such a transformation. It it will change the garage completely. Mm. And that's fantastic. I want to put a weird disclaimer in here. Oh, okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Yellow mustard will stain these floors. Really? What? Yes. Weird, like not Dijon. Not Dijon. Yellow. Mm-hmm. Yellow mustard. Like ballpark mustard. So that's, don't eat any hot dogs and get crazy. mustard on your floor. Well, well, that's what I eat in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, come in. Well, okay. Be well, a neater well, eater. So, so it just discolors it. It doesn't necessarily affect. It's not like some acidity yeah, to no. it. But it'll discolor it. It'll stain it. So here's here's the cheaper option, Kev. Okay. If you dribble a little yellow mustard on your floor. Yeah. Go buy like ten jars of it from the store. Yeah, and get you a mop. Yeah, just mop <laughs> just that even stuff it out. Yeah. Well, or it's even easier. I, that's the color I wanted. As soon as it hits the floor, just wipe it out. Oh. <laughs> so actually, be a clean, cleanly person. I mean, if, you're expecting if, a lot from him right now. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll tell you this. I, Let me know I, how it turns out. Yeah, if I pay eight to nine dollars a square foot there's for this thing, you better dang well believe that I am going to clean up some. Mustard, <laughs> especially if I know this is clever. It's like call the cops, <laughs> call whoever you gotta who, call. There's mustard, like like who bought the mustard? Sirens are going on, like wee, wee, mustard. It's like it's like the the time whenever. <laughs> You know, like a, a what was it? Whenever a sock like hit uh, Sully on on Monsters Inc. or something, oh. like all of the sirens go off. It's like something bad has happened. Like that would be my garage because I'd be like, not gonna happen here. But but now you know? that you told me that, if he ever gets it. Like, I'm going to go leave a thing of mustard in his garage, like, every week. Yeah. Just to make him think that I left a little in the corner. or Like a little Where's Waldo. Yeah. And it's just going to have a little sticky note on it that says, Love Craig. Right. <laughs> I believe that's true. I believe that's true. And um, I'll tell you this. Like, I, I mustard would be banned from my garage. <laughs> it would be like, no, this is a ketchup-only area, you know? Or, or, or Dijon. Or Dijon. Which, yeah. why would you not? use that anyway like Sorry. if you okay, have a difference not. between it's like a far superior mustard <laughs> it absolutely is like stone ground you know spicy brown something but yellow just get that junk out of here yeah anyway. let's let's just let's just go ahead and put this if you're using the standard yellow mustard just stop listening to this show i'll put it this way if you're using the standard mustard you're not buying this floor. <laughs> You've got a whole different type of taste. You're doing the DIY at home, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's fair. Okay. It's fair. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> putting it out there. Well, cool, man. This is it was pretty- good knowing you, though. <laughs> That's right. right. We'll and, see you on the other side. And we lost In like mustard hell. Three fourths of our <laughs> listenership right now. People are like, "Take I love that yellow mustard. It's so good." Oh man, it pairs well with chili. <laughs> That ain't right. <laughs> oh man, this has been really, really good. Like I'm, I'm. It's funny because I was, uh, I was actually talking to someone about a, an epoxy flooring just the other day, and they were talking about how this is just blowing up around the nation, not just in the Houston area, just around the nation. And maybe it is because people are, you know, living out of their homes differently than they used to be, or 
I also think it's because that it's a newer product. I mean, it's not something that's been around forever. It's not something that people are like, oh, you know, whenever you do this, you do that. I mean, it's just not – it's new, and it's something that people are excited about because it really changes the livability of your home in many ways. So – it's really, really cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that we were able to have you guys on the show uh, to, to talk about this for yeah, sure. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah it's been really good. It. Well, uh, so here's the deal. Um, uh, all of our listeners wait. They, they, they wait to this like hour. So we're right at the hour mark right now, and they wait, and they're like, man. When are they going to get to the final four? <laughs> because the final four is the most important part. So here we go. It is time for the final four. The final four. That's right. These are the final four questions we ask each and every one of our guests. So we're glad you're here because you've not been on our show before, which means we get to ask you. So here they are. It's pretty simple. All right. You guys ready for this? Yeah. We're going to ask both of you. And Lauren, since you're the female in the room, we're going to let you go first. Hooray. Uh, followed by your, your dad. How chivalrous uh, David. of you. Yeah. Hey, I'm a nice guy over here. Right? <laughs> All right. So here we go. You've been uh, warned. You have been warned. Uh, no, and I'm sitting next warned. to her dad. And he's a little bit larger than me. I'm, I'm a little bit scared of him already. Not the one you need to worry That's, about. No, I'm not. She'll take. He was, well, he was real up front earlier on before we started the show that he plays with swords. So, that's right. I mean, you yeah. do what you want, Kev. I'm, I'm, okay. Here, I'm going to read the question perfectly. <laughs> All right, here we go. What's a, the must-have tool that you won't leave your house without? That's a good question. I've been thinking about it since I listened to the show last week. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, the things that are in my toolbox are, um, since I'm I'm more on the sales side, is a little different. Okay. So I'm going to take a, a little spin with this one and say, I don't leave my uh, my house without my cell phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, because I need that um, as part of my job, and so it is my most important tool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you right now, that is the number one answer we get. And <laughs> and it's not surprising. Yeah. I mean, that there's so much that you can do with your phone. I mean, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it is a tool. And we, I joke every once in a while, I'm like, look, you can even order a tool that you need with that phone. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. you know that. It'll You're be there in 48 it'll hours. Be, yeah, exactly right. Or if you live in certain areas of the country, one hour delivery from Amazon, you know, drone delivery, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, David, what about you? Well, I can't repeat her answer, can I? No. <laughs> you could. You actually, can, but, you know. We'll, we'll know that you cheated. <laughs> well, I don't leave the house without a tape measure. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Because what's the first thing you're going to do when you get to a job? You're going to you're measure gonna that sucker. Measure and evaluate and. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you, are you using a standard tape? Are you using a roller wheel? What, she, what are you rocking? Well, she carries the laser and the roller wheel, and I carry the standard tape. Okay. okay. Have you have you tried the tape measure on your phone? I have. Have you? Yeah. How does it measure up? I couldn't uh-huh. figure out how to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I learned something about the tape measure the other day from my friend David Applebaum. Okay. I, I, Are you talking about the little? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so I, maybe you know, guys know this. I, I'm a woodworker myself, and I feel so stupid not knowing this. But David, uh, our friend, he's an architect, and you know the little metal thing at the end of the tape measure. Mm-hmm. And you know, like it's kind of, some of them you get, and you're like, this loose. thing's a piece of junk. It's loose. Mm-hmm. You know why? Yeah. Okay, please enlighten us because I'm I'm some young stupid oh. person that doesn't know what this is for. I thought you were just asking me if I knew why. <laughs> no, do you know why? Well, it's so when you measure something, if you're pulling the tape or or you're pushing it against what you're measuring, uh-huh. yes. you get the correct measurement. Yes, it is a it is a perfect uh, wit itself, right? Mm-hmm. Like it it has it has a, a, a little bit of wiggly to it because mm-hmm. whenever you're pushing it up against something, it measures that. If you're pulling against something, it measures that. Correct. I'm like, this is new information. <laughs> Why did I not know this? The more you know. I know. <laughs> exactly. Well, I felt really dumb at that moment. After school with the homeowner show. I wasn't judging. <laughs> well, either way, David, thank you for enlightening me on that one. There you go. That's good. All right. We're going to go on to the second question, and here's the second question. What's a job you walked away from? No explanation. 
<laughs> Too honored. Fire yeah. away. Oh gosh, a job. <laughs> I normally I explain from. this, but yeah. we talked. We talked about that. You guys know what to do. Yeah. We, we had a little prep. Yeah. Um, so I will go with the industry that I walked away from was okay. banking. Oh. Um, my first job out of college was banking, and I enjoyed the customers. That's mm. why I still I like working with people, mm-hmm. but I hated the institution. Yeah. So I um when I left I um walked away from from that completely. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's for some people. It's, but it wasn't for me cuz I don't like being in the same place every day. Yeah. So, in the jobs that I've done the past 4 years and then this one now, I do the same thing every day, but not which, the same location. But not the same location. Sure. So, I have the routine with the change of scenery every sure. day. Cool. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right, David, what's the job you walked away from? I am not going to replace all of the wet sheetrock mm. in the house. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Have you had to do that before? We flooded in yeah. February. Oh, oh man! It Busted pipe? A- yeah. Three of them. Suck. Oh, dude. We we've got a well, Craig and I have a really good friend who uh, their whole house is completely gutted because of it. Still, yes, yeah, still completely gutted. It's a long, horrible. Ugly, messy, frustrating, infuriating problem. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna hire a professional. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'll with you, you, man. Like I'm, not, I'm not touching that stuff. No, I'm, I, I, I don't mind hanging sheetrock, which I really don't love doing it, but I'll hang it. You don't want me to float and tape it. Oh, that's a lot of skill. Ooh, it's <laughs> art. Mean, it it, it is. really is art. It absolutely is. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Question number three. Here we go. How do you wind down at the end of a long day? Um, I like to exercise. Okay. Um, I own a studio where I teach martial arts, and that's what I like to do. Um, now, the older I get and the worse my knees get, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, that shifted slightly to teaching. Um, and I, I can distinctly remember when I was in the fifth grade sitting in Mr. Miller's math class. Uh, and I was I was part of the bad class. I wasn't bad, obviously. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in a bad class, and uh, he was losing his patience. And I thought to myself, I will never be a teacher. Uh, I will never be be a teacher and then now that's that's what i like to do for yeah. fun yep okay cool david what about you how do you wind down at the end of a long day i read oh okay what do you like to read yes no uh, okay <laughs> you, non fiction fiction uh, non-fiction okay I, I don't remember the last piece of fiction that i read all right you read anything good right now um i'm reading a couple of business books i'm working on right now okay so been reading Brad Sugars lately. Which one's that? Uh, Brad Sugars is uh, his company is called Action Coach. Okay. And uh, he has a whole series of books, and they're they're quick reads and really really good information. So yeah. he, he kind of breaks up different aspects of business of operation business, and ownership yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. No, that's great. Cool. What's the What's the best one you read in the last twelve months? The Coach. The Coach. Mm-hmm. Who's that by? Red, red sugar. Red, red sugar. Okay. Check it out. I think it's called the business coach. The business coach. The business coach. Okay. okay. She well, read it too. I, I'll tell you this. Craig loves to read. I enjoy listening. He reads by listening as well. But reading's great, man. Then you oh, yeah. learn so much just by reading. I like to listen to audiobooks. Yeah. I drive around a lot. Yeah. I'm so the same way. Yeah. I like just turn it on. Yeah. I'm I'm listening to an audio book right now. I was listening to it on the way over here. I'll probably listen to it on the way home. Uh, It's good stuff. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Last question. What is one of the best pieces of wisdom or advice you've ever received? Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gave her so many. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what you say. Your, your dad's right there. That's exactly keep, right. keep your hand off the trigger. Off the trigger finger. That's not a bad one. <laughs> keep your finger off the trigger. That's, right. that's a good one. Um, uh, well, um, I think probably the most um, – impactful thing that was ever said to me is is you know this this too shall pass mm. you know a lot mm. of people they get caught up in the moment and and everything and and uh everything seems like a big deal when it's happening to you and then 
five years later, you're like, oh, yeah, I, I think that I, I, I remember that happening. and I didn't like yeah. it. But, you know, um, it's it's taken a long time to get to that point, And I think that's just part of, you know, maturity is just, you know, chill out, calm down. It'll be OK. Right. And you're like, no, everything's not going to be OK. But it is. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> sure. You'll be all right. Yeah. Cool. David, what what pieces of wisdom have you imparted on her that, that, you, that, you've, that you've found really, really important? Yeah, keep your finger off the trigger. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <a good one. laughs> that's a good one. Um, that one's actually easy for me because it's been my mantra for many, many, many years. And that's learn something new every day. Mm, yeah. Man, that's good. And everyone has something they can teach you. They do. Yeah. And, and it really, I mean, if you're in the posture of learning, you're going to learn something. Absolutely. Every day. Yeah. And if you're in the posture of, look, I, people can learn from me, you're going to be the one that's like, that person's not real smart. <laughs> right? It's just the way it works. Well, you, eventually, you come to realize that it's not, a, you're not judging intelligence mm-hmm. because you know more about a lot of things than I would. Sure. There's a lot of things that I might know more about than you do. Yeah, but that doesn't that make either one of us dumb. No, <laughs> no. no. We actually <laughs> talked about that earlier, just about, look, I'm not a professional at everything. I can't be. Right. Right? Someone knows more about something than I do. And that doesn't, yeah. again, that doesn't make you dumb. It just means that someone else has spent more time doing it than you have. Right. But yeah. if I respect that, then yeah. there's always something you can teach me. That's right. That's good. And if I don't respect that, then I'll never learn it. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yes, yeah, circling back around the books, one of the ones I read last year was uh, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Have you read that one? I haven't, but yeah, I, I know the title. It's yes. fantastic. One of the rules in the book is assume the person you're listening to knows something you don't. Mm. They always do. They always do. Like, And like, it's funny the way he phrased it like that, right? Assume the person that you're mm-hmm. talking to knows something that you don't because a lot of people assume that they that they they don't. Know. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a, a saying in the action coach, um, mm-hmm. Brad Sugars, as he was talking about, and if somebody's talking to you, and even if it is something that you know, don't say, oh, I know, I know, because you've closed yourself off yeah. to learning. Yeah. So if you would shift that, I know, to, well, isn't that interesting? Right. And then you can draw more out, and then you might actually learn something that you didn't know. Right. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Well, here's the here's the weird thing about what's about to happen, and that is that uh, there's a secret fifth question oh. that uh, <laughs> oh. Craig Craig actually is the only one allowed to uh, to an- to ask this question. Yeah, if y'all didn't notice, Kevin Hogg's the final four. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, that's just because Craig's Craig doesn't remember the questions. That's right. So I got to remember the questions. So, but but this is the one that he is committed to memory. That's right. I got it locked right here. Yeah. If people want to get a hold of you. How do they do so? Well, the easiest way would be to go to the website. Okay. Which is? GarageKings.com. Okay. Or they can actually find the microsite at GarageKings.com slash North Dash Houston. Okay. But they can get there either way. And, of course, they can always call us on the phone, too. Okay. What's the, what's the number there? 832 <sighs> We also are on Facebook at okay. Garage Kings North Houston and Instagram at the same handle. Fantastic. We'll link all of that up in the show notes That's right. so that people can find you if they yeah. want to get their garage floor looking all spanking new and pretty. Yeah, this has been a fantastic episode. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come out and, uh, you know, spend time in the studio and, and, and talk to us and. Uh, Look like at my a, disgusting garage floors. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you want a quote on the way out? Yeah, yeah I would. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see those chains. <laughs> what do they use them for? Well, it was it was to uh, to straighten out uh, bent body frames on cars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I'm just saying that's what it was for. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, that's this is this has really really been great. So thank you guys for coming out. Well, thank you for having us. We thank really you. appreciate it. Yes, we yeah. do. Awesome. Well, uh, for those of you out there listening, I hope this has been a, a good episode for you that you've enjoyed uh, hearing some things. If you've not already, go ahead and take a moment, like, subscribe, click the little thingy, leave us a rating and review. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but yeah, we're here each and every Tuesday. So thanks for downloading today's episode. Until next time, we'll see you later. See you.